This is uh, slide four in our 20s unit. Um, 1920s fads. Uh, nice short slide for you here. This won't, won't take long. Uh, but let's talk about some, uh, some fads here. A fad is something that's, you know, temporarily really popular and then usually goes away. Not all fads do. Some stick around, as we will see. Um, but uh, they're really popular for a while and then they fade off. Um, let's talk about one that's completely faded off uh, and completely odd. Flagpole setting. This became very popular uh, in the 1920s. Um, and the biggest name, <laughs> there couldn't have been a lot, but the biggest name uh, was Alvin Kelly. His nickname was Shipwreck. Alvin Shipwreck Kelly. Uh, and there you see a picture of Alvin sitting on his pole. Now, you might be thinking, and justifiably so, why in the world would people, you know, sit on poles? Um, it was done for PR purposes, okay? Uh, you would prop a, a, a pole up uh, with a little platform on top, and you'd climb up on top of the pole and sit down on the little seat, um, and they'd take the little ladder down, and you sat there uh, for, you know, any number of hours or days, however long. Um, it was done as PR stunts. Uh, new business would be opening, you know, and uh, they'd want to get people down to, to their business, so they would... Uh, pay somebody like Alvin Kelly to come down and sit on a pole outside of the outside their their store along the sidewalk there and you know you walk down the sidewalk and see a guy sitting up in the middle of the air and think wow what's going on there so you walk over to see and hey look there's a new store here maybe we'll go check it out uh, so it was done for this advertising uh, more than anything else to promote business openings uh, but flagpole setting was very common uh, back then so much so that somebody's actually known for it right? Uh, another fad that we don't see much anymore, dance marathons. You see the picture here at the uh, the bottom of the page. Um, and couples would enter dance marathons. Um, and then other people, you see kind of sitting in the back there, um, people would pay to come and watch. Okay? Now, it, the rules were simple. Um, there was a band that played music, and you and your partner had to dance. At least one of you had to be moving at all times, uh, but both of you had to be on the dance floor. Um, as soon as both of you stopped dancing, you were out. Um, last couple standing wins the prize money. That's about it. You got a break every couple hours or so to go to the bathroom, or most of some people ate while they danced. Uh, but here you see these would go on for hours and hours and hours or days. Um, and uh, people just hanging on their partner asleep. This poor guy here is sound asleep. Um, but, uh, and if you came to, you know, if you entered, you had a chance to win the prize money. But if you came to watch, like these guys back here, um, you know, you came in, you ate some dinner, you got to listen to some music playing, and you watched these fools out here swaying back and forth, you know. Um, we don't see dance marathons around much anymore. And thank goodness. I can't imagine it would be very exciting. Um, Several things we do still see around, some fads that caught on and stuck around. Uh, Miss America, the first Miss America pageant, was held in 1921 in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It was won by uh, a woman named Margaret Gorman, and there you see her picture up there. Um, she was, uh, I think, 16 at the time she won. Uh, she was a representative from the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., Miss District of Columbia. Uh, Margaret Gorman becomes the first Miss America uh, in 1921. Still have that around, obviously. Uh, miniature golf as a, uh, a, a hobby, a, a pastime, uh, debuts in the 1920s and then really into the 30s would become huge. Um, but miniature golf was, was introduced, sort of think putt-putt, you know. Uh, it started off as just a sort of a, a smaller version of actual golf. Uh, it was played on real grass. Uh, it was called garden golf. Um, but eventually they, they standardized the, the surface that it was played on. Uh, they added rails or bumpers to kind of confine it to a space. Um, by the 1930s, by the time the, the decade is over and the 30s gets here, uh, there's approximately 30,000 miniature golf courses in the United States. New York City had over 150 rooftop 
courses. Um, New York City crowded, not a lot of place to put things, so you put it on top of buildings. There were miniature golf courses on top of buildings in New York City. Um, but it became popular because it was a sport that, you know, I, anybody of any age could play, regardless of uh, whether you were a well-conditioned athlete or not. You could play putt-putt, play mini-golf. Uh, so that becomes popular during the decade. Um, and finally, in 1924, the first crossword puzzle book is published. Uh, Simon & Schuster, still a publishing company around, um, publishes the first crossword puzzles uh, in 1924. So if you're a fan of the crossword puzzles we do at the end of each unit, you can thank Simon & Schuster in 1924. Uh, if you hate the crossword puzzles we do at the end of each unit, you can blame Simon & Schuster in 1924.